All right, so today we're going to go through some of the uh, basic introductory stuff for modeling up our sunglasses. We're going to look at um, inserting canvases, scaling them up properly, um, making sure they're on the right planes. And we also want to play around with actually um, getting some of this geometry going in 3D space, not just on 2D planes. Um, so let's get into it. First thing we want to do is well, as we can see, there's just two things here, and that is a couple of canvases we want to bring in. So if you've taken pictures yourself, you should have a front, a side, and a top view of your um, sunglasses. I was, wasn't was able to find a top view of these ones online, um, so I just went with a generic top view, which I'll show you how to insert. But if we're bringing in a front view, what we want to do is come to insert in canvas, or sometimes it's right up there at the top just straight to insert from computer and pick your image. So after that, it asks what face you want to put it on. We're just going to go with the front plane. And right away, it's down here. And for yourselves, when you bring this in, you don't have any previous images to look at. So your scale, you're not going to really have a reference for your scale. So what you'll do is just hit OK. And then you'll come in and actually scale your object or your canvas using the calibrate. Um, I think if I, I'm just going to measure off my existing one. So what I'll do is just go calibrate. Well, that just glitched out as it likes to do. Uh, sorry if it bugs out a couple times. That's kind of just part of it. It tends to happen when I record my screen, but it allows us to pick two points. So I've gone from there to there and it's about 137 mil. So I'll just say about 145 on the other one. Um, so if we zoom in here, hit calibrate, it should come up with a little bit of a menu. If it does, that's helpful. If it doesn't, whatever, you just have to click two points. So I'm just going to click out here. It comes up with a green dot in here. And I'm just going to say, make that about 145 mil. It doesn't really matter if it's super exact or not, but we just want to try and work in one-to-one -one as much as possible. Uh, next thing we want to do is actually edit our canvas. So um, we can edit canvas, sorry, so we can move it right into the center. Uh, sometimes it can be hard to find the exact center. I'll tend to go with the highest point on this inner uh, bridge. So you can see maybe just a bit across. The higher res picture you have, obviously, the better. Um, but that's how I would go about that. And, you know, uh, where it's actually located vertically in the scene doesn't matter. Like if you want, you can bring it above the um, origin um, or that bottom plane or completely below it, it really doesn't matter for um, this one. So that's all right. So that's how I'd bring it in. It's what I did for the other one. And uh, look, it actually came up very close. Um, side view was the exact same thing. So I brought it in. Um, I actually spaced it back a bit. Again, not incredibly relevant right now, but um, yeah, then I just measured uh, using a vernier on a pair or a tape measure or a ruler, whatever you have on a um, pair of sunglasses you have, or if you can find the dimensions um, of a specific pair of glasses that you're looking up, that can be really useful too. Um, so you bring it in on a side view, doesn't matter where it is. You then want to um, just go to calibrate, pick your two points, put in a distance, and then just position it. Um, it can be really helpful to just play around with these views up the top right to make sure you've kind of got everything just about in line. So the top of those should be about touching, the bottom should be touching. This scale is slightly off. My side view is a bit too tall. You can see where these boxes are kind of clipping over each other. Um, so I could just go in and edit that and try and bring it down a tiny bit. It can be a bit awkward. You can see it's there. It's 9.72. Um, so now it's gone a little bit the opposite way. 
And this is why you want to have an exact number um, and work in that one-to-one. -one. So if I go like 1.015, that'll probably, yeah, it's pretty much bang on there. Um, so again, the position front to back isn't uh, super crucial at this moment. Um, this is where we want to bring in a top view to sort of tie it all together. I was only able to find a generic top view of like another pair of sunglasses. I couldn't find the exact ones that I was looking to model up. So what we want to do is insert them on the top plane. And here we can see it's put them in facing the wrong way. So we're just going to go ahead and rotate and scale them up. Now that we have a couple references, we can pretty much just uh, eyeball it. Um, just keep dragging it up, obviously not too big. Um, and because these ones aren't going to match up exactly, um, we want to just kind of line it up mostly. So uh, if I drag this out of the way, these bits over here where the actual hinge ends should kind of match up with that bit. Um, we're not doing this to be super exact. We're just learning processes. Obviously you should take a bit more care with your ones. Um, but something like that will just be great for demonstration. And well, from here, you probably just want to put it slightly behind there. All right. So now we've got a couple reference images that mostly line up at this point. We could then, um, edit our side view, uh, to line up with our top view a bit better. So where this actual hinge point is. We can bring that back or it like make the front of the bumps match up. Obviously these aren't going to match up perfectly because we've got two different pairs of sunglasses, but something like that works. We've got pretty much a reference or at least two references wherever we look at it. Um, so that's great. We can start with this. Now, what we want to do is base this whole thing around a sort of the lens, the lens area. Um, and to do that, we want to create the geometry of the lens itself first, um, and then model the glasses outwards. Cause I mean, like the focus of sunglasses is the lens, how they fit, how they look, um, that you don't have any optical distortions or anything like that. So the lens should be a continuous, uh, sphere type shape. So what we're going to actually do, we're going to come into create. And we're just going to go to a sphere and you can just um, put it in the middle right now. It doesn't matter, but we're going to make it a diameter of about 220. And you're going to have to bear with me here because it's uh, quite interesting where we're actually going with this. Um, so what we want to do now is position this sphere of ours um, where one of the lenses would be. So we move it down and we move it across and we kind of want to line it up with where the lens would be. Now, it doesn't have to be exact um, just because again, there's like perspective and top and side views and everything going on, um, but something like this, and then we might find that it has to come up a bit so it can match to our side view something like that. Obviously you're not going to learn a lot from the front view here, but it's about getting that curvature kind of right. You can play with the sphere size, go up and down. Um, you know, maybe this one's a bit too small. Um, it really depends. It, it should work fine for our purposes. Um, and I would be pretty happy with that, but I want to actually just go probably about there slightly behind because we're actually going to offset forwards from there. All right. So what we have is pretty much all of our baseline geometry set up. So I'm going to do a very great thing and just hit save. Um, it does wonders for not losing progress on your work uh, because fusion can crash. Um, so from here, this is where it starts to get a bit more interesting with actually copying this front shape. And what we're going to do is play around with our freeform tools. So we're going to come into our create form, take us to our form workspace. 
And what we want to do is create a face. And we've got a couple options here. We could click on the front plane or we could select this object snap mode. Now what this is going to do is snap our face to this sphere in 3D space. So we could click there, there, there and there. And we can see at all those points it's touching the sphere. And that's exactly what we want because we're going to create an outline. Um, so I'll just delete this. And this is super cool for like any complex shapes. It works for 3D scans, anything like that. Um, it's a really cool feature that you really don't get in like other CAD programs. Um, so that's why we'd want to do something like this. Now just working out what part of this is the actual face and what parts are the inside. So we don't want to follow along here because I think that's the inside of where the lens is. Um, and I'm just going to ignore this sort of part line section for now. Um, we just want the general shape. Um, detailing can be done later. So I'm just going to start clicking there. We can come out to about here or we can come straight here. And then we want to start building up some faces. When it comes to the center, we're going to bridge across that later. Um, so right now we just maybe want to do something like this and then we want to build off from this section so there 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 and we're just going to do that all the way around now this might uh take a while for me so i'm actually going to take some larger gaps here sometimes you might want to become uh oh, sorry not become um create some very short faces like if you've got some a really tight radius, you might want a couple really tight faces there. Um, but most of the time you can get away with relatively large ones. While you're doing this, you probably just want to keep an eye out to make sure you're coming out perpendicular. So um, that's tangent running across the curve, like however that works. And then you want to go perpendicular to that. Um, instead of coming straight down vertically or out more horizontally, you want all your faces to be as even as possible. So we do that, we bring it all across. And it can take a bit of practice to get it kind of right. Um, it can be a bit awkward as well. If you exit this um, window, you can carry on from where it left off. Just make sure you turn on object snap again because it likes to disable itself every time you open and close the window, which can be frustrating. And then, yeah, it's really just a matter of going around. Now you can change up some of these settings. One of these will allow you to just bridge off from the edge. Um, really not that big of a deal, just clicking through it because we're getting there. Um, again, when we get to the very top, um, this section is going to bridge off quite differently. So we just want to kind of try and get an edge around here. Um, but it doesn't matter too much right now because we can come through and massage that area a bit later, which is what we'll do. So we'll just do it something like that for now. And we just want to keep filling out this shape all the way across. And I'll just bridge the whole thing from here to here. Cool. So we go OK. And we can see right away it's uh, pulled it in onto the surface. Like that's pretty cool, right? It's um, It's got this 3D shape going on. It's following the sphere all the way around. And when we turn on our canvas, we can see it did go into the smoothing mode, um, which we kind of explored in our first little um, assignment the different ways of viewing this so we can go display mode box mode or whatever you call it and smooth display now there are some issues here where our smooth display is coming uh, right through it needs a bit more information in terms of lines so what we can do quite simply is go insert edge if we select one of these it can be really good to just go both 
and that's going to select both of these insert an edge now you can see it does get really tight around there so we just want to make sure we put our edges exactly where we want them to be on our image now this one just has to be manipulated at the point but that's gone nice and tight there it's following it around this bottom one seems to be a little off we generally don't want to um, massage our shapes from this view because what we can see is um, the box mode looks right, but the smooth mode doesn't. So what that tells me is that I probably need um, a bit more information in terms of edges. So I'll just insert another edge there, edit that, bring it across, and try and keep it nice and tight to the actual shape. Um, and that way it, it really follows the contour a bit nice. Like around here, yeah, maybe we can just nudge it up a bit more. Um, but I think that works pretty well over there. Over here, uh, it's a bit harder to tell because we also have this double edge. So we'll just come through and um, insert an edge here. On both sides can work really well. Just um, don't forget about the second side because it can make it look really sort of janky. And yeah, this is a great way of just coming in and repositioning some of these bits and pieces. It's good probably to have this one here horizontal so you can grab the scale and pull it down just because we're going to be extruding outwards from this point in the future. So that's a good little trick for later. You might find that some of your faces are really quite far off and need a fair bit of work. Um, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say that's probably fine for now. Um, just because otherwise I'll be here for like an hour just tweaking these shapes and we don't really need that, do we? All right, so we've got this shape here where it's on the face of our sphere. Um, we can pull it back to the surface where we adjusted it, but that's something we'll look at later when it comes to tweaking the overall shape. Uh, what we want to do now is bring out a section for the bridge and then we want to bring out a section for the handles or e rest parts, whatever you call them on a pair of sunglasses. Um, so we want to go to edit form and we want to select the faces we want to drag out. So check it in box mode, this face, this face, uh, maybe this face, we'll have a look at how that works. And we just want to hold down the alt key and drag and that's going to bring out a new section of faces we can then select the side thing there to change the scale um, just grab them and drag them really close to almost zero and now when we go back to our other mode we can see it's starting to blend them out really nicely so um, we'll just double check that we're multi-working there all right, so it's going to need a little bit of tweaking. We can select all of these and actually bring them across to about here. The bottom one's got to come down a bit like that. Um, these bridges can be quite tricky. So that's one where I would recommend editing it as a um, smooth body, not a box mode. Um, so that works for now. We can just kind of leave that. And what we want to do is something very similar out here. We're going to select um, maybe just these two and drag it out and see how it looks. Yeah, I think that's something we want. Um, do that, flatten it out, bring it to about here, and then we want to straighten out this top like that. And we can see we get a really quite a smooth transition. Um, we can see now it's kind of pulling away from the body of the um, sphere. There's a few ways we can go about that. One of the ways is just uh, manually adjusting it. Another way is where we can pull. So it snaps selected T-spline vertices to a face or surface. Um, we can pretty much select all of this and on auto, it's gonna select the nearest body, which is the sphere. So that's a really good way of just like, cool, fix it up bang it straight onto that surface, um, and now it's really crisp. 
and that's exactly what we want. So that is an excellent way of um, making the program and Tease Wines do all the work for you. Um, from here, what we now want to do is consider how this will come out on the side. Um, if we go ahead and pull this straight back, it's going to get uh, super bendy, I guess is one way to describe it, and it's going to do it over a really large radius. Uh, we don't want that. Generally what we want to do, um, if it's going to be a somewhat smooth edge on a T-spine, is bring it out a little bit and then move backwards from there. Um, well, we can you know, make it follow the curvature and then bring it out from here. So if we look in our box mode, we've got a couple here, a couple of lines there for some uh, solid data for it. And then we can pull out again. Now we can see this area stays relatively the same, but over here, um, we're actually pulling out away from the body. Um, fortunately, these ones are quite uh, straight. So we can come maybe all the way down to here. Uh, we'll have to do some tweaking, obviously. Um, we can change the scale of it once it gets to the end. We can just tweak that down, flatten it out. Always good to have it quite vertical or straight. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, when it comes to bringing out areas that curve, and we can see now it, it wants to, because there's such a large space here, um, it wants to really just blend everything together. So we might have to do something similar, like adding a bit more geometry in here but we can do something like this and just see how it works. The problem with this is it's looking good, except we really do want to kind of keep that uh, perpendicular element of it. So we want to rotate this to follow the, under, the curve that's underneath it. We can do that, we can do that. And then as we pull it out, we just want to bring it out like that. We can grab this and pull it down. Um, another thing we can do here is actually play around with the way that um, what's called coordinate space and it's just how it maps out the, what do you call it, the, on Rhino you would call it the gumball which has all these options on it. Um, it's just the transform options so if we go um, selection space it tries to line up as best it can with the parts you've selected. So with these edges, if we do that, we can just kind of flatten them out in a straight line, position it like that. Um, it's pretty useful because now when we're dragging out here, we can just grow it a bit, maneuver it up or down. It can be really handy to work with in this. Uh, now, one of the things here is I'm actually going to leave this looking like this at the edge. Um, because what we're going to do later is actually come in and fillet these using the proper fillet command so we can manipulate it um, manually. And this is a bit too high here, so I'm just going to grab that and drag that up a bit. Um, we could do the same thing with this over here, but yeah. All right, so now we've got the basic shape of these glasses from the side view. They've got to curve out slightly over here. Uh, sometimes this can be quite easy, it just wants to play nice, so if we grab that, um, we can go by the faces at this point, maybe we need to go by the edges, um, but again, this isn't the exact image um, that we're trying to reference, so it can be a bit awkward. Um, we'll just try and give it a bit, of a, a bit of a taper inwards. So if I double click one of these, it should pick up the one next to it. It's a little awkward. So we can do it this way. Thankfully, the blend mode's gonna help us out pretty well. And we can see some of that doesn't look quite right, does it? So top view. Yeah, it looks like this one needs to come out more. Something like that. It's not perfect by any means. We can uh, double check on the side view. Did anything break? No, it all looks kind of good. And if we move it around, yeah, it's kind of all right. It looks a little odd, doesn't it? Um, maybe I'll just bring that out a bit. Make it a bit softer. And this middle one, 
one of these middle ones can just come out. Sometimes it can be really awkward to just kind of navigate and rotate properly. Um, it just takes a little bit of practice and sometimes a little bit of luck. Um, what we can see here is the way it's actually slightly coming down and kinking outwards. You want it to kink inwards. Um, so something like that should work pretty well. Uh, let's just go with that for the sake of we're doing a video and need to move on. So we can talk about that in class and how we might tweak that further. Um, so right now I'm going to just go ahead and hit save. Now there's two ways we can go about bridging this from one side to the other. Um, we could just grab this, drag it across and mirror the whole thing. Um, or we could mirror the whole thing and then bridge it. I might just go with the simple way of dragging this out to the side and trying to make it as flat as possible and trying to line it up with the, there we go. Sometimes you've got to flatten it out in box mode instead and just bring it to that sort of center line, that origin. I think that's, oh, that's actually just the canvas. Where's my origin gone? Turn on origin. Yeah. Okay, so it's pretty straight to the origin. So we go okay. We love how awesome our glasses are looking so far, uh, mostly. Um, so then we want to come across to symmetry. We want to duplicate our piece because we've got a whole thing here that we need to get all the way over there. So we can go duplicate. T spline body, easy. Mirror plane, easy. Now there's a thing here where we can see they're not quite touching and we want to change that. So we've got this option for weld and what that's going to do is if there's two things that are touching or very close, it'll just join them together, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. So this weld tolerance, we actually have to just crank that up and we can put like 0.5 of a mil and we can see that's enough. Let's put that solid green line and that means it's going to mirror across. So right now we've got two sides to our sunglasses, they're joined. We can just go ahead and turn our canvas back on to see how that middle bridging bit goes. We want to grab this and pull it up. So you always want to make sure that you're kind of following the curve. So we can just bring that center point just up a bit higher. Um, and that just works a bit better with following there. Down here, we can tweak it a bit more, bring it in bring that in. We can see that our canvas isn't exactly symmetrical. That's okay. I would probably just um, ignore that and go with uh, making one of the sides look absolutely right. So as long as it's symmetrical, it's going to look fine once you've got the canvas hidden. Um, and we are dealing with photographs that have to deal with perspective and lens warping, all that kind of stuff. It's never going to be absolutely perfect. Um, so let's just look at this and all right that's looking pretty promising I think so what we want to do now is add some thickness to our glasses and we want to actually do this in the freeform workspace because it's not what we might do usually oh and so here we can make sure these are doing kind of what we want sometimes they flare inwards sometimes they don't um, I'll just strain it out a little bit because why not um, so we've got this here, we want to thicken it just because there's a couple little things we want to tweak um, in the freeform workspace still. Most times when we do something like this and thicken it out, we want to start dealing with it as a completely solid body. Um, but in this case, we're going to stick with this. So what we'll do now is come across to thicken. Um, and you know what, I'm actually going to pause on that for a sec. What I'm going to do is just copy and paste our body because that's going to work really well as a backup. So once you thicken it, there's not really any going back. So if we copy and paste it, just hide it, leave it hidden, it's going to be a really good backup. Like you can always do the version history stuff in Fusion, but unfortunately at this point there's no timeline for the form tools. So sometimes making a backup can be really useful. So go ahead and do that. So anyway, we're at that point where we're going to thicken it. Um, 
as we drag it out, we see it's it's going to get pretty crazy um, in complexity. So we're just going to go four mil. That's pretty good size, I think, for most sunglasses. Uh, direction, we want to make sure it's on the normal. So what that's actually doing is pushing away from um, where it was originally contacting. If we go to axis, it's going to go on a straight line. Um, and we want to make sure it's sharp. That's going to crease the edges um, along here. Otherwise, it's going to try and blend it over and it's going to start looking really weird. So uh, I've already managed to bugger that up. I undo thicken. I think I pressed a button I didn't mean to press. So yeah, thickened it like 0 0.02 or 0 0.12. So four mil, thicken outwards. Okay. All right, so it's not showing it now, but these edges are creased. That's just a little glitch Fusion loves to do, um, and I cop that quite often. But it's really cool the way it offsets it. We can see it actually kind of mimics the way that um, that looks now. If we turn on the perspective camera, it's so, sort of going to look the same the way it's thickened outwards. Um, so we're just going to roll with that, which is pretty good. This all looks quite all right to me. Sometimes you get some weird stuff going on here. Um, like you might want to pull the outer one down slightly to give it a little bit of a taper outwards, but we are just going to ignore that um, for now. This is something we can always tweak on our own later. Um, one of the things we want to do is actually come in and give it a, a bit of a ridge on the nose. Uh, not sure if we can see that from our side views. You can't see it on this one. Um, maybe on our front view. Nope, these sunglasses don't seem to have a ridge. This one does, where it kind of pulls in a bit in this area. Um, but it still will have the same thickness on the front. So we can kind of play around with that a bit. Um, and be good to do, even if it's not on your glasses in particular. And again, because we've got this solid green line, it's going to pull out on both sides. So we can give it a slight ridge or something like that um, because I don't really have a reference I'm just going to say that's fine uh, maybe it's a bit low but it doesn't really matter that's fine um, maybe it is a bit low so you know you might grab from a single point and this is, is where it would be really beneficial to have um, a bit a couple more edges in here so you can get a bit stronger control over this form um, most of the time it really just does come out something like that maybe not as drastic but doesn't matter and then we when we fill it later we'll see how that goes all right so at this point we have our overall form and if you get this second shape that's just that backup body showing through so we have let me just delete this empty folder um, we have our sphere we have our glasses or the main sort of deal with our glasses. Um, and now we want to look at putting in a lens, right? So the beauty of this is we've got the lens form. It's the sphere. So now we have to do some tricky um, offsetting and um, trimming to get exactly what we want. So what we do want is to come across the surface, have a look at creating an offset, and we're going to select this inside face here. And uh, we probably want it to come out um, maybe about a mil, maybe a mil and a half. I can't really remember what the standard was that we kind of went for. Let's go negative 1.5. Why not? Um, if it looks too weird, we'll trim it down. And so what that's going to do is um, move this back on the inside here. If I can... Oh, we can show it using that um, original body. So now we've got an offset here and our lens is going to snap into place at this level. Um, this will make more sense in a second. So now what we want to do is offset our actual uh, lens surface and we want to do this by 2 mil because if you remember we thickened our um, we thickened our 
sunglasses form at uh, two at uh, four mil. Sorry. So we want to bring this out by two mil. So it's right in the center of this shape. So now I'm going to hide that sphere. We're not going to. I don't think we're going to need that again. And what we want to do is now offset it again. Um, we can make it go both ways. We could actually, we could probably even just thicken it at this point. Um, there's a bunch of different ways of making shapes happen here, right? Um, so it doesn't really matter. Let's just actually go ahead and do a thicken. Uh, if we come into create thicken of our face, we want to make it symmetrical and lenses really aren't that thick. Um, how thick does the lens go? I don't know, 0.75 maybe. So it's about what one and a half mil thick. That seems kind of right. We'll do that. It'll create a new body. So now we've got, I'll actually turn on our section analysis on our right plane. And we've got this, right? So this is going to be our lens. If I can turn on this, aha. Here it is. All right, so that's starting to look a bit better. Um, and we can see where this line's gonna be. So this is gonna create our lens. And it's gonna be super awesome because it's going to fit within our actual frame. Um, and it should all look really cool and nice. So what we wanna do, we'll just turn that analysis off, hide that frame. We wanna trim away everything we don't need. So we can come across to split body. Body to split is going to be this big one. Splitting tool is going to be the surface. We don't really need to extend it or anything, but now we have two separate bodies. So we got that and we got the inside. So we can select this outer body and hit remove. Do not hit delete, hit remove. And that gets rid of it from the timeline. And now we've got what looks like a lens. All right, progress. And hopefully now it all starts to make sense. Um, so depending on how much we actually offset this inwards by, which is negative 1.5, we would then want to offset, uh, put a bit of a chamfer on our lens itself so it can snap into place. So I'm going to hide our body and add that chamfer. So to here, and we'll probably make it two distances. And let me just rotate this camera around. So down here, we're going to go 1.5. And over here, we're going to come out by, I don't know, 0.3 maybe. Um, we can make this slightly longer, like 1.6 or something. If you wanted to like stick out a bit, it could be cool. Um, so we do that. Sometimes you can get away with selecting two edges. Other times it gets the directions confused. Um, okay, that. Yeah, so that's just, uh, let's just let's just do it one at a time. All right, so one point six and point three. Maybe we'll go point five there, and we'll just do another chamfer on that. You might actually want to make these uneven for style reasons, I don't know. There you go, see that looks like it's actually doing what it's meant to do. 1.6, 0.5. This isn't exactly a critical uh, figure. It can be whatever looks cool or right at this point. Um, but what we see now is that our lens is um, tapering inwards. So I'm gonna turn that analysis back on, zoom out and revolve this around. And we can see how it will fit in here. So now what we have to do is just add a bit of a trim or combine. Um, so that's going to cut out this section of the glasses and make us have some very happy times. So we come across to combine. We select our target body, which is the frame. The tool body is going to be this lens. Now on join, you can see right away it tried to merge in. We don't want that. We want to cut. Um, hopefully you all had a bunch of practice with your Boolean tools. And we can see that's going to cut out the perfect slot for these lenses. We just want to make sure we keep our tools. Otherwise, uh, the lens goes bye-bye. So we keep our tools. Boom. 
that fits in perfectly. We can talk about putting in tolerance and stuff um, later, or we could just very um, quickly grab all of these inside faces that should chain all the way around. And we can just offset that very slightly. Um, sometimes it doesn't want to play nice. I'm just going to go new offset, negative 0.05 or something and see what that looks like. Wow, I have never seen that one before. That is something very special. All right, let's ignore that. We can find another way around that by offsetting the lens outwards and trimming it later. Um, someone please remind me of that when it comes to uh, rendering, because that's pretty funny. All right, so yeah, we can turn off our analysis. Um, and we can see now we've got a lens sitting nicely uh, within our frame. At this point, um, it'll be good to just come across, let me delete all unused. Um, yeah, we can just come and put a glass texture, just a light one on that. That looks nice. Paint or a plastic um, straight onto there and just throw some color or whatever you want on it. I don't really mind. Lime green is always pretty cool, I think. Um, yeah, so now we can see how we get that main form going. Um, from here, it's about details, splitting it up, and um, putting in some hinges. Um, I'll show you just what I meant about leaving some of these things for later when we're talking about rounding this out. Um, so if I turn on the canvas, we can see how this rounds out. Now, I think I extended this a little too far. It's fine, but it's a lot easier to manage some of these um, fillets um, in the modeling workspace as opposed to um, trying to do them as a free form. Fillets are kind of complicated sometimes and doing them like this gives you a lot of control over it. Um, I could still go back in and adjust the length of it um, manually, but I'm just gonna do that. Um, and I should probably only do one side anyway because I'm just gonna mirror the whole thing, but something like that. So. I would leave those end fillets or the end sections for now. Um, and yeah, depending on how you go about it, you could um, you could leave this whole side off for now and mirror it all later. You could just mirror across the lens and chop it out of there. Um, so if we come across to uh, mirror, body, lensy, Okay, um, because we're going to be doing some things over here where it'll probably be easier to chop it all up and mirror it. Um, but because we're kind of doing this as a process, it doesn't really matter. The mirroring part of things is really easy to just copy across. Sometimes we want to do features that are on both. Um, so don't think about that too much. I think I've overthought it already. So target body, tool body, set to cut, keep the tools. Cool. Um, so already that's kind of given us our main form of our sunglasses, right? It's quite a bit of progress. Uh, the te techniques are a tad bit involved, the whole sphere thing and positioning it. Um, it can seem weird at first and a bit um, not so much daunting, but it's kind of hard to follow along with why you would do it that way at the start. Um, but yeah, so again, sometimes like we spoke about in class, it's cool to come across to the render and have a look. This this texture really isn't working for me. How I don't know why it's going so f like flat-ish, um, but you can have a look at putting other ones on. Sometimes the paints just work better. Um, <laughs> yellow flakes a bit extra, so you got to just change the scale down if it looks really weird. Um, but yeah, so have a play around, maybe throw, yeah, some color and stuff on. Um, oh, and one quick thing, if you see your text just freaking out like this, um, it may be very hard to see on the, on the video on YouTube, but this one's actually stretching. Um, you might want to just come across to texture map, 
select your object, change it from automatic to box, and that's gonna um, fix that. So what I'll do is, if that's not showing up incredibly well, I'll change that scale really high up. All right, so here we can see that um, on this face, because this face is actually quite large, it's one big one, um, the texture looks okay on the side, but then when it gets to this area, it kind of freaks out and doesn't match up. Um, the same kind of thing happens if you go with a thing that has a bit more texture. So if we come across to uh, like a carbon fiber, right? Not, not just on the face, please, but on the body. We'll move it all. So we can see right now, this is mapped out incredibly weird. Um, there's a big, big, not good bit here. Um, and we can control this in Fusion by playing around with the texture map controls for the body. Um, we will go over this in class when we're talking about rendering and everything, but just going with basic box mapping for now um, can sort a lot of issues out. Um, it may get weird in some areas, but again, I don't think it should be, it should be a really quick fix for a lot of these things. Um, I mean, carbon fiber kind of looks gross to me, so I'll just put the flake back on, but at least we don't have that error. Um, I mean, it's not technically an error, it's just we had the wrong setting, but yeah. Um, anyway, play around with those. Um, obviously go backwards and forth through the video and um, figure out how to do the whole sphere lensy thing and try and get up to this point by our next class. If you've got any issues or problems, shoot me a message. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching this and hopefully I'll see some really cool funky glasses start to take shape soon. Bye.